So prog proof of work is a proposal to change the algorithm for right now Ethereum. It was targeted for Ethereum audience, but it's really for anybody that wants to implement prog proof of work. Prog proof of work looks at an opportunity to leverage an entire GPU. So right now, the computational jobs that are going on on proof of work, which is the work that we, we are served up on a crypto mining you know, concept of, of reinforcing a network, we're all served the same work, the job. The GPU handles that job. Well, it handles it in various different capacities. The capacity might be hitting a core really heavy, sometimes like uh, with Ethereum where it's very memory intensive and IO intensive. It, that's why memory matters on the cards. Certain components of different algorithms leverage different components of a GPU that could be sometimes easily replicated on something like like this little squirrel device, which is an FPGA, um, to where you can program it to be faster on a, de a more dedicated device. ASICs, which is one more step further than that, takes that entire computation, maps it to a device, and then will do that computation only. It's only good for that one component, and it will do it very efficiently, sometimes 10 to 100x more efficiently than a GPU. So prog proof of work was taking a concept of saying, what are all the components on a GPU? How to search that efficiently? And it tries to use all the components of a GPU to where it de-incentivizes somebody to go out and build one of these because essentially if to write a particular bit stream for this or to build an ASIC, they're effectively having to build a GPU, which then puts them in competition with AMD or NVIDIA, right? So it's saying that, oh, I'm going to build a, an awesome prog proof of work special device. You're essentially building a GPU at that point, right? And then it... If that ends up having somebody like Bitmain or one of these other ASIC makers say, hey, we're going to compete in that realm, then effectively we're getting a third entry into the GPU space, right? Which might be good for everybody um, from a competition standpoint. So that's really what Prog Proof of Work is. That's why it's using more power um, because it's actually tapping the entire GPU. It's threading out the core on the GPU. It's hitting the memory hard. So that's where it comes from an algorithm standpoint. Right now it's really just targeted for ETH, but other algorithms um, and networks can pick it up. Like with all the research that's going into it and you got heavy development and uh, Ethereum developers looking at it, you got people that are hardware enthusiasts looking at it, you got people like myself that look at, you know, what do GPUs do on it um, at, you know, and get a whole range of performance numbers. That's a lot of effort to, um, you know, give confidence at least in the space of other algorithms or other coins may look at using prog proof of work in the future because now you have all this research on it and you have all this data on it you can start to say well maybe i if we're going to fork like let's say monero keeps changing up they're in version 8 they're about to go version 9 on like march 6 on their algorithm because fpgas keep getting coded for it so they may at some point not saying that they've even the you know monero's even looked at this but they could come and say you know we keep trying to tweak our algorithm and we're spending all this effort trying to change and, and de-incentivize ASICs and, and FPGAs to start hitting our algorithm. Maybe we should use something that's more leveraged into GPU. So that's why the testing is important. Um, and then, you know, to see what the longer term effects are with prog proof of work, where are GPUs being leveraged at such a high rate? Because right now a lot of these coins hit like the memory hard, but you can undervolt the core which means the GPU is not getting as hot and all this other stuff. Well, prog proof of work is really taxing the GPU. So it's not going to be a, a matter of hitting the highest amount of mega hash. Um, I think on this algorithm, it's going to be how can I starve it of enough power to where I'm preserving my GPU and I'm not overheating it and all that. And where's that kind of be that simple balance to where I'm not trying to just get 30 mega hash or 20 mega hash out of it. I'm getting 18, but I'm getting it at you know, a low wattage, not have to pay for as much power, and I'm not being so hard on the GPU. So that's kind of more of a, I would say, future state testing. Right now I'm looking at what are the GPU's baselines? You know, what do they do stock? What do they do with overclock? What do they do underclocked? And then get a huge foray of, you know, 65 plus GPU types and uh, of like how their performance is. And then we can kind of make good decisions of like when you look at pricing and stuff. So.